All right, our next music artist is a singer and songwriter from Western Massachusetts. After inheriting her grandmother's guitar and a bag of handwritten cover songs, she returned to music after a 10-year absence. Now, her grandmother, while waiting her turn in song circles, her sweat and oils had permanently worn away the finish in the shape of her grandmother's hands on the guitar, which she travels with, but not today. <laughs> Doesn't travel with her. Um, giving guidance to her releasing her first album, The Wishing Hour, in 2017. Her grandfather was Walter Einzel. He's an Americana artist and designer of the Age of Information display that was at AT&T's Futurecom Pavilion in Communicore West. Some of you may have heard her on the podcast when we interviewed her. In the past, she has shared the stage with Laura McKenna, Little Big Town, Arlo Guthrie, Regina Spector, The Secret Sisters, Teddy Thompson, and many others. This year, she released her second album, How We Want to Live, and she was awarded the New Folk Award, Award in Caraville Folk Festival, and most, re most recently has been nominated for Folk Artist of the Year in the upcoming 2019 Boston Music Awards. Please welcome to the stage the only person that I know that has grandparents, with both of them having Wikipedia pages, Lisa Bastoni. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so Lisa, we, we kind of met by happen chance in a way, I guess, uh, when it comes to the podcast, there was a, a YouTube video, and it was posted by Lisa Bastoni, and I said, this is the age of information display, and I said, we got to write her and find out, because this is the only video we ever saw of it. Um, so we interviewed, and come to, as we mentioned in the opening, your grandfather, Americana artist who did work for Jell-O and uh, American Van Lines, I believe it was. Yes, Al I think it was Allied Van Lines. Allied Van Lines, yeah. correct. Um, so tell us a little bit about how you stumbled across these items that um, in this treasure chest. So my grandparents were both visual artists and they worked um, in Westport, Connecticut, where I grew up. And my grandfather passed away in 1998 and my grandmother stayed in the house until she died uh, a few years ago. And so when my family was going through the house, um, I, their house was just full of artwork that they had made and antiques and little um, boxes like this and just floor to ceiling, just things that they made and things that they had collected. And I found um, in a drawer all of my grandfather's plans for the Age of Information exhibit, and I found a VHS tape that had the, um, the video of the exhibit on it. I didn't realize that it was something anybody was looking for. Because <laughs> we, we contacted you, and you're like, right. people want to see well, this? Well, I just, I saved all this, the Epcot drawer, I saved all of it because I thought somebody should care about this. I care about this. So I'm going to hang on to this. And then it was such a nice surprise to hear from you after I posted that video on YouTube. Yeah, so we interviewed her. We also, uh, you sent me the videotape. Mm -hmm. So we're able to actually do what we can to video to, to help enhance it. Um, and we interviewed and talked about the song. You being a singer-songwriter, mm -hmm. I said, oh, you've got to come perform this at some point. <laughs> I'll get in touch. Um, but I want, I want to look at some of these pictures sure. that your grandfather, I mean, some of this is the original drawings that he did. Um, let's put ourselves back into 1982 here, and we're talking about the office on a chip, right? Um, these are things that people didn't hear about, and especially when she sings the song, I want you to listen, because as much as the lyrics are very futuristic and looking forward to the future, your grandfather had to take those lyrics and turn them into something that people didn't know. Yeah, I think that was the assignment was, and I think that they chose him because his, his artwork was so um, approachable and warm and um, inspired by folk art. They wanted to introduce these new technologies in a way that would be relatable and not scary, I guess. Right, right, <laughs> and I think we, we have one coming up. Up here we have entertainment, the stock market, shopping, travel and food, emergency, and medicine. Um, I mean, it sounds like what's in my pocket today. You know, it's the smartphone here. Now, this is the uh, this is another drawing of the the mobile that went around in the in the display, and I think we have. That's the first mobile phone, I think. <laughs> it might be. It's a mobile phone. You get it? <laughs> oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you started it. 
Uh, this here is, uh, this is what we were just talking about, electronic mail. How do you convey electronic mail in 1982 when it was just not part of you know, the, the lexicon of, of America, or the world? Uh, so here you see a, 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 a postman working. This is electronic mail. He's got his you know, careful slow down there. Now this is really cool. Um, these are the little, what would you call these? Almost like maquettes. Yeah, the these are little Two models. Dimensional. Yep. Um, so we st he started with the drawings, and then this would have been the next step to um, begin to make the little models just out of balsa wood with um, like a tracing paper um, cut out. Glued and on top. They were going to mimic the movements of the characters, correct? Right. I would think it was just to, to be able to move them around a little bit and see in 3D form how, how things would work. And that's what's in the box? That's what's in this box that I found we in a, a closet peek? somewhere. <laughs> and at the um, end, Lisa's going to be back there in the, in the back corner so you can go over and see these. So I know they're hard to see from up here. They're really tiny. Here's a, uh, a little cow. <laughs> <laughs> There he's up there. Um, let me see. Oh, there's one of the ones with the arms. Oh, here's the, this is pre-Amazon uh, little delivery coming through a computer. I mean, <laughs> it's so tiny. They nailed I'm it. sorry if you're <laughs> way in the it. back. But, yeah. I think, yeah, there he is. He's, he, we got him right there, too. Yep. I mean, the gentleman in the bed uh, calling as well. Um, so the song... As we mentioned, Age of Information, as uh, you know, as I said, it, it's um, it really predicted the future in a very accurate and eerily fashion. Well, I think it was uh, this assignment was um, through AT and T, so Correct, I think they yeah. they knew what was coming, and they so they said, you know, there's going to be electronic mail and smart telephones and everything else we have now. So you've taken the song, you've listened to it. I've had this song in my head since 1982. Because <laughs> <laughs> you were here. Uh, oh, well, we'll go through these real quick, too. I forgot we had oh, these, so yeah. Right, so after the, the tiny version, uh, my grandfather made another um, scale model version. I'm not sure what the um, proportion was to the final exhibit, which was, the final one was, I think, 40 feet wide. Um, but this, um, this one, I remember, sat in his studio for many years, oh, really? um, and it's maybe two feet tall, this one. And then, is this the same and this, one? And this, this is, is the complete the um, scale model. I'm not so sure we don't the know the size of this. No, I think it may be... I mean, we have the can lights up there, so a few something. feet, yeah. yeah. And you can see the detail and how much there's the chip in the center. We have the, mob the mobile on the left and Uncle Sam up there in the middle. Um, and we have a few shots of it complete as well. So here it is at the installation, um, probably around 1982, 1983. And this here, that's actually my grandfather and my sister. Oh, really? I threw that in there. Oh, yep. That's there they are. So that's, 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 I can tell you yeah. exactly. It's October 1986. I oh have it exactly gosh. dated. Yep. And uh, more importantly, you and your grandfather... <laughs> <laughs> right? This yep. was this was the week of opening the, Epcot, yeah, we, right? Yeah, we flew down. Um, so it's funny, this is only my second time visiting Epcot, and both times are because of my grandparents. So it, I'm really honored to be here um, sharing this work with you. So you were here for the opening. So here for the opening. And, and sadly, it's walled it. off. Yeah. The building is, yep. is being demolished. Right. So, um, so going back to the song, you, you mm -hmm. listened to it, um, worked on putting it together. I, your own take on it. I don't really think anybody has, other than the original recording, anybody has really taken the song and, and taken a new direction. No, and I found on a scrap of paper, which I imagine my grandfather on the phone taking notes, um, the name of the, the songwriter on the song. It's so by Tom Tierney, who wrote for Broadway. And wow. I, so, so we finally have, have identified, so yeah, yeah. We need yeah. to find out more about him. But. Excellent. So we'll give you a second here to okay. set up. And um, Lisa is going to sing her version in honor of her grandparents, The Age of Information. Thanks. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> and just to add a little thank you, um, so we did restore the video from her grandparents, uh, her grandfather. We're going to play that in the background. So Lisa's going to kind of face you and the film to try to 
match them up as best we can, right? I had to uh, hand write the lyrics because my printer broke. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> So yeah, I'll be reading. I've never, I haven't attempted this in, in front of an audience before, so we'll, we'll all see how it goes together. It, it's so <laughs> catchy that if anything happens, we'll all sing along with you, so. <laughs> now mom and dad and junior can Fangled smart telephone. It's amazing all the things it can do as it brings the world closer to you. You can sit right there in your easy chair and check the stock report on a screen at home. Make plans to roam to your favorite ski resort. It'll bring the world. Closer to you, there's a wonderful change coming, a beautiful day dawning, a miracle we're seeing come true. Cause the age of information is sweeping across the nation and bringing the world closer to you. It will call the cops on a It will help the kids with their homework. It will hook your home to your office, send your heartbeat clear across town. It will give you all kinds of freedom, like when you wanna go shopping. It'll bring the store to your front door. It's the handiest thing around. And it brings the world closer to you. And it's making the world better. Giving the world something brand new. Cause the age of information is sweeping across the nation and bringing the world closer to you. Now the miracles have only begun, and the places where our business gets done. Of tomorrow will be the very model of efficiency. If you want data, you'll get that data, and only the data you need. And the words are moving, and the mail is moving with electronic speed. You will talk to two or quite a few on a teleconference call. The chips are sorting and the data's moving on a thread of glass so small. As it brings the world closer to you, your phone will be a computer. It will make your bank deposits. It will mail your voice like a letter where it can wait to a later date to communicate. So we're making the
Lisa Bastoni. Thank you so much.